My father wrote the book on making things unnecessarily complicated. Emily and Glenn are picking up her dad for the mining trip to Kugarok. We haven't cut the Visqueen yet. Okay. Uh... We, we're gonna have a, uh, a 10 by 16 piece of Visqueen and we're not gonna go out there. The toughest part of the trip? Getting Steve Rydell into the truck. Emmy, are we gonna cut that Visqueen you wanted to cut or not? What's that? Oh, I don't want to cut it. I want you to cut, you to cut it. Well, okay, but you need to help me. Okay. That's fine. Just direct me. Among Steve's demands, a 10 by 16 piece of clear plastic Visqueen to make a roof for a kitchen in the wilderness. You know, I wish we'd have got together a little closely on this kitchen thing because that's, it sounds that's all we like need a we'll... recipe of disaster. No, it sounds like a recipe of camping. No. What do you, what do you no, want? Disaster. What do you want, like an oven out there? Uh, Emily, don't be smart me. Don't get smart ass with me, no. Okay. I'm walking out of here if you're gonna start getting smart ass Okay, with me. walk all you want. Okay, I'll see you later. I'm out of here. Oh, come on, Dad. No, no, I'm done. Don't be ridiculous. No, you get all smart with me instead of planning with me at this late Dad, moment. I'm done. Dad, what do you want for you? I want cooperations and Yes, sir, and no, sir. My dad this, this season has been struggling um, a bit. He seems to be unusually irritated and highly stressed. You know all what? you had to do, you know all what? you Maybe. had to do was get out of your truck and go to the kitchen. Okay. That's all you had to do. All right, what's going on with you? I don't know, but I don't like being thrown around. I don't like being disrespected. You around, disrespected dude. me. All, you you, are, are, you were asked are, to get out of the car and help me with a Visqueen. You did it. This is all in your head, Yeah, Steve. okay, well, you're done. You know, if you kept continually interrupting me, too, continually interrupting me. You know there, what? There you, you go just, again. Like, why don't you get the hell out of here? here with your Out of here. here. Go. All right. No, I'm not going to put up with that I'm not going to put up with it. That man lost the right to my father as soon as he stopped paying child support at the age of 12, okay? Over in the harbor. A couple ounces. That's the day's goal. Aboard the minnow. Three ounces. That's pretty good. Two and a half. Yeah, if we get two, we'll be good. After being ditched by his daughter and Glenn, Captain Steve Rydell is heading out to see if the water's clear enough to dive. For diver Chris Kelly, this season on the Minnow has been one setback. And the compressor keeps turning off. We're almost sinking. Leave it there. After another. <laughs> after another. We haven't gotten any real gold. I definitely picked the wrong boat to work on. If I get 10 ounces in my pocket to get the hell out of here, I'm gonna be real happy. And that's gonna happen if I have to jump on Steve's back and ride him like a horse. Go get that gold, dude, go get that gold. Oh, uh, there we go, baby, we got sucked in. That's some Chris Lags. Holy, the rocks are so big at this place. That was a big rock. Aha! What? Hey! A picker! Yeah. Woohoo! It's a good day when you can get on the gold by 10 o'clock. You're doing pretty good if you're our crew. After two long months, there's gold here. Chris Kelly has finally hit pay dirt. I'm seeing gold. We're on the gold. We're down. We got lots of fuel. Everything is smooth. Knock on wood. Hey, is there something wrong with my hair? Yeah. Is there something wrong with my hair? Chris's air pressure. Is dropping by the second. This would be a good time to take care of your diver. What the f are you doing up there? Hey, 
there. What the f the problem? The minnow's shoddy air compressor keeps shutting off. Mark, cover the gate. You know you have to look at that gate, right? Yeah, every once in a while, I try to. No, you got to take your headphones off. You got to sit by there. I'm sitting by there. To me, but I call you because Because I know Steve doesn't know what he's doing. I have a real good, good idea of that now. But, you know, I work real hard with Steve. You'd think he would try to take care of me a little bit. You gotta trust the person that's on top. We didn't have any air. And I almost drowned is really what happened. Today is just Uh-oh. But the fun is just beginning. Looks like we lost the mask, huh? The mask is supposed to be tied on. How could I lose the mask? Well, the quick disconnect came out. In a panic to get topside, Chris has left the crew's only dive mask and respirator at the bottom of the Bering Sea. I just can't win. I swear to God. I just lost a thousand dollar mask. Uh, actually, uh, 1,200. Ah! Right now, I'm having a lot of trouble with these Kelly dudes. That's so important to keep morale up because these guys, especially these guys, such powerful personalities, their, their lows are really low and nasty. So you want to keep them up to where you can actually talk to them. You want me to go see if I can find that thousand dollar mask? I was going to go do it. Are you? Yeah. I, you know, I was going to free dive. Not a problem. Captain Steve is going to dive to the sea floor with no air supply. I'm going to go down. Give me a five count. Pull me back. OK, buddy, do it to it. Right. There better be at least an ounce in there for almost dying. 